From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. These are the cybersecurity headlines for Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024. I'm Lauren Verno. Proposed rules ban U.S. companies from selling sensitive data. The Biden administration has formally proposed new regulations that would restrict the sale and transfer of sensitive personal data, such as health, financial, and geolocation data, to six adversarial nations, including China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, Cuba, and Venezuela. Now, these rules, which stem from a February executive order, aim to address national security risks posed by foreign actors exploiting bulk data to carry out cyber attacks and espionage. Now, the new regulations set strict thresholds for data transactions and impose compliance requirements based on cybersecurity frameworks with exemptions for certain telecommunications and clinical trial data. Though with congressional and presidential elections just weeks away, there is doubt as to whether there will be any forward momentum on the bill this year. Cisco data stolen by Intel broker. Cisco confirmed that a hacker known as Intel broker stole files from its dev hub environment, a public facing platform used for content management. Now, while the hacker claims to have accessed sensitive data like source code, hard-coded credentials, and confidential documents, though the networking giant says only a, quote, small number of files not for public download, end quote, may have been compromised, but that no confidential information was impacted. Cisco has since disabled public access to the affected site. Nidec breach exposes 50,000 plus documents. Japanese electric motor manufacturer Nidec has confirmed that its Vietnam based subsidiary was hit by a ransomware attack that exposed over 50,000 internal documents. The attack was likely carried out by the Everest ransomware group, which leaked the stolen files after Nidec refused to pay the ransom. The company reports that the breach was contained to NPCV's network with no secondary intrusions detected and that the stolen data has not been used for further malicious activity. APT41 Group Linked to Months-Long Attack The Chinese nation-state hacking group APT41 has been linked to a months-long cyber attack on a company in the gambling and gaming industry where they stole sensitive data, including network configurations and passwords. The group used a sophisticated evolving toolkit to bypass security defenses, maintain persistent access, and escalate privileges. The attackers' custom tools allow them to establish covert channels for further malware deployment. While exact initial access vector is unknown, security researchers believe spear phishing emails may be the point of access. Thanks to today's episode sponsor, SpyCloud. Did you know that InfoStealer malware can be a precursor to ransomware? InfoStealers are a trending tactic used by cyber criminals to exfiltrate valuable identity data like credentials, PII, and session cookies. According to recent SpyCloud research, 75% of organizations were affected by ransomware more than once in the past year. Visit spycloud.com slash headlines to find out how to keep your organization from becoming one of those statistics. That's spycloud.com slash headlines. Don't update for fear of blue screen of death. The blue screens of death are potentially back. Microsoft has issued a warning regarding potential blue screens of death crashes on ASUS X415KA and X515KA laptop models. Don't worry, this is all in our show notes. When attempting to upgrade to Windows 11 version 24H2. 
The company is collaborating with ASUS to resolve the issue, but until a fix is implemented, affected devices will not receive prompts for the update, in addition to the company encouraging users not to manually push for the update. Google's red page warnings are getting outsmarted. Anti-bot services sold on the dark web are being used by cyber criminals to bypass Google Chrome's red page warnings that alert users to phishing sites. These anti-bot services work by using disguised phishing pages from security crawlers and blocking access to them from outside regions, which significantly reduces the effectiveness of Google's preventative measures. While these methods can prolong the lifespan of phishing campaigns, they're not foolproof, as more sophisticated phishing operations can still be detected through manual analysis. Security researchers who discovered the bot said the best defense is to invest in security platforms that can detect threats in real time across email, mobile, and messaging apps. Bumblebee malware stings back. The Bumblebee malware loader has resurfaced four months after being disrupted by Europol during Operation Endgame. Initially developed by TrickBot creators, Bumblebee employs tactics like phishing and malvertising to deliver payloads such as Colbot Strike, Beacons, and various ransomware streams. Recent campaigns involve phishing tactics that entice victims into downloading a malicious zip file, which contains a shortcut that triggers PowerShell to download disguised malware posing as legitimate software. Once executed, Bumblebee's DLL payload begins its unpacking process, revealing its signature internal configuration mechanisms. VMware flaw still not patched. VMware is struggling to effectively patch a critical remote code execution vulnerability in its vCenter server platform. According to a recent advisory, the company rolled out a patch in September, but it failed to fully resolve the issue. The vulnerability, rated 9.8 on the CVSS scale, was first identified during the 2024 Matrix Cup hacking contest in China, where researchers exploited it to demonstrate the severity. The rush of new Gen AI tools opens the door to even more low-code and no-code business apps. But just as we've struggled with shadow IT, are we prepared for the shadow engineering these apps will bring? What controls can we implement to stop them from getting out of hand? That's one of the segments we went deep on in our latest episode of the CISO series podcast. Look for the episode, Who Knows What Evil Lurks in the Heart of Low Code, No Code, in your favorite podcast app, or head on over to the CISO series.com. I'm Lauren Verno reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISO series.com for the full stories behind the headlines. Mm-hmm.